I expect you to be consistent. I don't know if I've paralyzed you. No, 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 no. I... Let us move on to our next questioner at the microphone over there, Mr. Edelman. Welcome to America, Mr. Mandela. I'm Ken Edelman. Those of us who share your struggle for human rights and against apartheid have been somewhat disappointed by the models of human rights that you have held up since being released in jail. You've met over the last six months three times with Yasser Arafat, who you have praised. You have told Gaddafi that you share the view on, and applaud him on his record of human rights and his drive for freedom and peace around the world. And you have praised Fidel Castro as a leader of human rights and said that Cuba was one of the countries that's head and shoulders above all other countries in human rights, despite the fact that documents of the United Nations and elsewhere show that Cuba is one of the worst. I was just wondering, are these your models of leaders of human rights? And if so, would you want a... That we can and we will never do. We have our own struggle, which we are conducting. We are grateful to the world for supporting our struggle. But nevertheless, we are an independent organization with its own policy. And the attitude of every country towards our attitude towards any country is determined by the attitude of that country to our struggle. Yeah. Yasser Arafat. Colonel Gaddafi, Fidel Castro, support our struggle to the hilt. There is no reason whatsoever why we should have any hesitation about hailing their commitment to human rights as they are being demanded in South Africa. Our attitude is based solely on the fact that they fully support the anti-apartheid struggle. They do not support it only in rhetoric. They are placing resources at our disposal for us to win the struggle. That is the position. <laughs> well, why are you so insistent upon maintaining sanctions at a time when it can be argued that the South African government has made more concessions, your release being only one of them, than it has ever made in the past 40 years? I should know better about this matter, Mr. Coppel, than you. <laughs> no doubt. After all, it is the ANC, not the government, that is responsible for the present talks. We have been hammering the government since 1986 to meet us. And in, and in spite of the humiliating and insulting conditions they tried to impose on us, before they could agree to meeting us, we nevertheless had sufficient patience and sufficient commitment to peace as to continue hammering them to meet us. They have eventually done so, 
But despite the fact that uh, the talks are now uh, on, apartheid is still in place. The police are still killing our people, as they've done over the years. Vigilante groups are openly arming themselves for the specific purpose of attacking progressive groups and progressive leaders. The right wing is also arming itself openly, and they say they are doing so for the purpose of destroying the ANC. They are calling for some of us to be hanged. Why would you think that we should now relax our strategies? What has happened? Let's move on to the next question. Amanta. My name is Gloria Tude. I was born here in Harlem. I'm a lawyer. I've lived here all my life. I'm also on the board of directors of uh, the African Educational Foundation that's raising money to train the people of Africa for industry. I am concerned about the future economy of South Africa. I am concerned when I look at the newer countries that gained their freedom so hard fought, indeed did not demonstrate sound fiscal policy. Illiteracy is still quite large and hunger. What <clears throat> if, if I may... What if... we want, what we want to achieve is a healthy and vibrant economy which can ensure full employment to our people, maximum production, and uh, the development of social justice. We wanted to rectify the imbalances that exist in our economy. One of the companies, well-known companies in the country, one company owns more than 75% of the shares quoted in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. This is illustrative of how our economy is organized. It is more, the, the, the resources of the country are monopolized by a white minority, even in that minority by a few individuals, whereas the masses of the people, especially blacks, are left poor, ridden with disease, illiteracy, without educational facilities, we wanted to develop an economy which will put an end to that and will leave to other people to put a label if they so wish. Uh, Mr. Mandela, as I told you before we began this broadcast, uh, almost all the questions will be coming here from the audience, but we also went to a couple of people back in South Africa, told them you were going to be on the broadcast, and asked them if they had any questions for you or comments that they wanted to make to you. One of those from whom we are about to hear now, and I'd like you to address your attention over to that monitor, is a man by the name of Koos van der Merwe, who's one of the leaders of the Conservative Party. Have a listen to what he has to say. Hello, Nelson. I'm a South African. I'm an Afrikaner. I want self-determination for my people in a part of South Africa. You can't have the whole South Africa for yourself. A part of it belongs to my people. Nelson, you're not going to nationalize the assets of the white people. I have worked for my banks, my mines, my businesses, and my farms. You are not going to take it. Stop your violence. Stop your sanction campaign. Stop your nonsense. Leave the violent campaign alone and come and sit down, become a normal person, and talk, and maybe that way we can find solutions. And lastly, forget communism, Nelson, it's gone. And I hope you will be well. I believe you were ill. I hope you will recover and have a good journey. Ik hoop van harte dat een dag ik de geleerdheid zal krijgen 
on met i të khesek. Well, just to interpret Please. what I said, <laughs> I just wanted to demonstrate that I am bilingual. All I have said to Kurs van der Merwe is to say I am happy to know you. I hope that one day we shall have the opportunity to discuss the affairs of our country. Mr. Mandela, as I mentioned to you before the program, we also have some distinguished guests sitting behind us. Uh, one of whom, uh, Mr. Henry Sigmund, together with two other Jewish leaders, came to Geneva to visit with you precisely because they were so concerned not only by the kind of thing that you just said before the break with regard to Yasser Arafat, with regard to uh, Libya's Colonel Gaddafi, uh, but also because of the support uh, that you seemed at different times to give to the PLO. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Sigmund to, to stand now for a moment uh, and pose whatever question he would like directly to you. Mr. Sigmund? Before I pose my question, uh, permit me to say first that when I had the, the pleasure and honor of meeting with Mr. Mandela in Geneva, we said to him, and I would like to repeat this now in order to put my question in context, that the commitment of the Jewish organizations that met with him to the struggle against apartheid, against racism, against injustice in South Africa is absolutely unconditional. It is not dependent on whether we are happy or unhappy with responses that Mr. Mandela gives to some questions. Having said that, Having said that, I think I would be dishonest if I did not express profound disappointment with the answer that Mr. Mandela gave to the previous question, because it suggests a certain degree of amorality. The, it suggests that the, what these people do in their own countries, what a Gaddafi does in Libya, what a, what a uh, Castro does in Cuba is totally irrelevant even in terms of the issue of, of human rights as long as they support the cause of the ANC. I hope that is not what Mr. Mandela meant and I would hope that he would clarify that issue further. Mr. Mandela. Firstly, we are a liberation movement which is fully involved in a struggle to emancipate our people from one of the worst racial tyrannies the world has seen. We have no time to be looking into the internal affairs of other countries. It is unreasonable for anybody to think that this is our role. I have been asked by somebody who wants me to express an opinion on the differences that are taking place within the USA. And he has made his position quite clear that there is racialism in this country. I have refused to be drawn into that. Why should Mr. Sigmund accept my refusal to be withdrawn into the internal affairs of the United States? And at the same time, want me to be involved in the internal affairs of Libya and uh, Cuba. I refuse to do that. As far as Yasser Arafat is concerned, 
I explained to Mr. Sidney that we identify with the PLO because just like ourselves, they are fighting for the right of self-determination. 